Christmas board is going to be dark soon. Yeah, it is, and we need to make a fire. Yes, we do, and I just happen to have with me at this very moment my old faithful survival knife and my ever trusty ferrocerium rod with which I love to make the fire. You know, everybody knows that it's so easy to make a fire with the ferro rod and the knife. You mean like this wispy, dry, whatever this is. <laughs> yes, and like this broom straw. Look at it. Look Ooh. at how beautiful that is. It's burning, I tell you. Or like this fat, lighter feather stick. Look how beautiful it is. Or like this tulip poplar feather stick. Mm. Oh. I see you have caught the tulip poplar feather stick. Oh, very good. Or this little pile of fat lighter scrapings. Ooh. Or this frazzled bowl of jute twine. Oh, do say. Behold. Oh, this little pile of finely processed paper towel. <laughs> or my cedar bark bird's nest. Ooh. It's a thing of beauty, I tell you. Isn't it lovely? It is. For the really hard core, this lighter fluid soaked old t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I propose something a little bit different. I propose that we leave our ferro rods in their fire loops. I propose that we leave our knives sheathed. I propose that if you have any ferro rods in your pockets or knives in your pockets, which I do, that we leave those in the pockets and we make fire with any other method but only with the equipment that you have on you right now. Wow. All right, challenge accepted. Let's do it. It's time. You know, always look for dead hanging, because that's going to be your driest stuff. And this is actually tulip poplar. The bark from a tulip poplar branch makes excellent fire material. I'm going to take this whole thing, and I'm going to see what we can do with this. Now this is what a tulip poplar looks like. We talked about the bark off one, now we want to show you how to identify one. All right, when you're trying to identify trees, pay attention to the bark. A tulip poplar has a very light, almost a white bark. Tulip poplar leaves look like this. And if you'll notice this fallen limb off this tree, tulip poplars like to drop their limbs. And there's that bark that is so priceless for tinder. This one's a little bit damp, but you can see that stringy inner bark right there. And that's what you're looking for. So when you're learning to identify trees, pay attention to bark, leaves, and characteristics. All right, so Jeremy brings me this tulip poplar limb, and I peeled this bark off of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start processing it. And that means just working it firmly in your hands. And as you see me working this, you can see these fine fibers being exposed, a little dust flying up. You can see the outer bark beginning to fall away. And what you end up with is a handful of very fine, fibrous, almost hair-like particles, much like this. That's the stuff you're looking for right there. Almost looks like hair, corn silk. It's dry. And you want to keep processing this so that you don't have any real big pieces like that. And then you 
just begin to work them into a donut shape, a, a bird nest shape, a bowl shape, whatever your, your favorite metaphor is. So at the end of all this, you wind up with literally a bird nest shaped handful of finely processed tulip poplar bark that almost looks like a ball of hair. And you're going to make a little dimple in the middle of it for your ember. And that's where you want to make sure you have some very fine fibers. And then you go about the process of creating an ember with nothing but what's on you. All right, to create an ember just from bark, you pull some of the finest stuff out of your bird nest, put it in the palm of your hand, begin to roll and press just like that. And when you're done, you can end up with a tight little ball of tulip poplar that looks just like that. Dad made me this little ember ball. What that's gonna do is save me from having to go primitive in order to start this fire. Once I turn this into an ember, I'm gonna place it in said bird nest and blow that to flame. Now, how am I gonna get that ember? Hopefully, if there's enough daylight left, it is getting much later in the evening here, I can use my trusty Fresnel lens. Now, the common Fresnel lens that you're gonna run across in the average store is about two to three X or two to three power. This is a five power Fresnel lens, so the magnification is much greater. If there is enough light, five X will get the fire done. I know Jeremy's talking about this wonderful Fresnel lens and they will work if they're five power, but we strongly prefer glass magnification devices. But the one thing about a glass magnifier is unless you want to hang it around your neck or just keep it in your pocket, a Fresnel lens advantage is this. You can keep it in your wallet. That's cool. Great job on that fire, Jeremy. Well, I appreciate it. That wind got nasty on the second half of you blowing in that bird nest, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. I usually like a cross breeze because if the wind is at your back, you can't control the amount of oxygen going in the bird's mm -hmm. nest. And if it's in your face, then it's Blows, just going to be blowing yeah, smoke, smoke all the <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. And right at the very end, you know, you turn the bird nest upside down and because that ember kind of burned through one side, you got to yep. pay attention to how it's burning. And I saw it, you, you turned it over on itself and that flame shot right up and ignited right away. It kind of surprised me how quickly it ignited once you turned it over. Yeah, I'd noticed that it was starting to kind of burn through and I was like, uh, if I don't move this, then it's, we're just gonna have a lost you know, right. shot here. So. That, was a, that was a great save right there at the end. So it pays to always be mindful of actually what's going on in that bird nest and you did a great job. Well, thank you. Well, thanks for joining us on Away From It All TV. In our bushcraft segment, we hope you learned something about fire making. Sort of amazing to me that you can go into the woods with a piece of plastic, a little woodsmanship, and some sunshine and make a fire. That's right. Don't forget to like the video, share the video. Please subscribe to our channel, and hey, thank you for the views. Get out there. Take somebody with you. Get away from it all. Where dreams are restored in the great outdoors.
and like these very dry leaves I'm going to put right here. <laughs> Very dry leaves. <laughs> I'm gonna pass out. Oh. I'm crying. I am too. I was just thinking I gotta wipe my eye. Oh, that bug spray. Look at my eye. Oh, it's small, very small. Here, hold on. Well, that really helped a lot. <laughs> Sanity, come back. <laughs> Where have you gone? <laughs> Why is this funny? Mickey Mouse sings John Denver. You fill up my senses. Like night in the forest and This old guitar taught me to sing a love song You need help, son <laughs> Taught me how to laugh <laughs> and how to cry Stop, we are wasting time 